Welcome seekers. Today I'm going to talk about real orange juice. Real orange juice. Have you ever tasted real orange juice? Or pure orange juice? I wonder. <laughs> See, a long time ago, particularly when I was a kid, uh, it was quite common to drink fruit juice, fresh fruit juice, like fresh orange juice, squeezed orange juice or apple juice. And I guess it is today in the health world, you can go to various juice shops and things like this. But what's become over the last 30, 40 years, what's become sort of normal, when you go to the supermarket, it's hard to find fresh juice like the old days. Usually what we find is artificially flavored water and it's got orange on it which depicts orange flavor now what's really clever that these uh, companies and producers have realized is that if you control the perception you can make a lot of money out of it and also if you make it the product cheap cheap on the wallet and easy and convenient you'll have a lot of profit. It's very clever, very clever, uh, very clever outcome, I guess. Very clever result. But what happens is over the time, when you walk into the supermarket, you see that there's orange juice, but it's not orange juice. It's actually artificially flavored water. It's cheap. Uh, no need to cut the fruit. No need to uh, squeeze it and go through all the the trouble of getting dirty and things like this and also sometimes when you depending on the harvest of the orange and when you get it if it's not so ripe it can become really sour the juice could be really really sour now we don't want that because what is also characteristic of artificially flavored water is sweetness so we go for this so we, our palates adapt to that and we see it everywhere, especially like uh, you see it here in Thailand, you see it in Australia and America. You go to any deli on it, there's all these artificially flavored products. But what's really funny is when you drink the pure one, like the pure orange juice, the sour, sometimes it's really sour, your body rejects it. You just reject it. You'd rather drink the artificial stuff most of the time. Now, of course, this is not the general rule, and this does not apply to people who are actively seeking better health. Now, the same comes with water. You know, pure water, if you think about it, where does pure water come from? Pure water comes from the heavens, do they not? The heavens, or the sky. Or if you want to take away all that, uh, I guess, religious tone right or spiritual tone it comes from the atmosphere up above right from the clouds or whatever but anyway it comes from up above we could say that we could all agree to that what does pure water do pure water gives life to all living beings doesn't it it's very powerful it's a very powerful source yet water always gets a boring rap Now what happens is, is it's kind of like a domino effect. Once you get your palate and your perception used to artificial things or artificial flavors, you tend to consume a lot of them. And you add sugar all the time to mask the sour or bitter taste. The problem is sour and bitter taste is good for the body. The sour taste is, for example, astringent. It's good for the liver. A lot of citrus fruits and... Uh, a lot of medicines, particularly in the in Chinese medicine or Ayurveda, like if you look at ginger or turmeric, some of them are bitter, some are pungent, some are sour, some are salty. These flavors are important for good health. And uh, like for, for example, the famous liver detox and things like this, sour tastes are very important. Also, antibacterial, antibacterial and uh, antiparasite. 
sour sour is a good antibacterial and a good anti uh, parasite kind of flavor like and and when you there's certain medicines that are so sour they can knock the parasites out in your body and you defecate them right and this this is this is uh, just ordinary Chinese medicine for example right so what we try to do all the time as you get used to the artificial flavor when you taste the pure things you tend to want to add certain condiments to it to sweeten it up now i'll tell you in the long run if you put two and two together artificial flavoring artificial flavored water leads to what does it lead to good health or does it lead to bad health haven't isn't the diabetes exploding in the last 10 15 years all over the world you know it's sicknesses where we're, we're actually sicker than what we were 2000 years ago if you read the old texts for example uh ancient chinese texts the lifespans were reaching 120 years of age in buddha's day right people were reaching 100 120 160 in the case of venerable ananda they weren't drinking artificial water or artificial artificially flavored water right things like this the power of pure water it gives life to everything just think about that i tell you when people do think about pure things is when they get sick what do you do when you get sick you seek help right or if you get cancer or a serious disease you seek help you go to the doctor you get medicine right but what does the doctor tell you to do if it's a good doctor not all doctors but if it's a good doctor you need to eat a better diet you need to drink more water you need to eat more fruit you need to eat more vegetables right you need to exercise what does exercise do and improves improves oxygen flow in the body oxygen rich environments cast out any kind of bacteria or malicious malicious uh malicious uh pathogens or influences right an oxygenated environment so we know that pure oxygen or oxygen right so we know that pure things when it counts do matter and i see this in the in a temple too and in previously before i was a monk in practice it's only when things go bad do the pure things matter for example, the, you know, a lot of people say a lot going around about, oh, the Dharma is just, you know, obsolete in the modern world. The monk life is obsolete in the modern world. Buddhism is obsolete in the modern world. What happens when most people become sick or there's a tragedy or a trauma, traumatic thing? They go to their spiritual advisors at that point and then they have like a holy or a spiritual awakening for some reason right? in general right so these kind of things right so when it matters people reach for the pure when it matters people reach for the Dhamma I had another person things weren't going wrong weren't going good for this person for a while and I said to this person a long time ago make sure you keep up your daily practice the pure daily practice even when things are going well make sure you stay in tune with dharma that you follow dharma stay in tune with morality stay keep keep on the correct way keep going the correct way when things go bad it comes in handy but this person decided no so this person pops up out of nowhere after quite some time and asked me to do some chanting for a blessing because person was going through a difficult time and wanted me to help the person immediately through the chanting so at that point the person the Dharma means something it's not outdated anymore it's not irrelevant it's not obsolete same with good medicine it's never obsolete pure orange juice is never obsolete you see pure orange juice leads to sweetness pure water leads to sweetness and I'll explain 
artificially flavored water leads to bitter artificially flavored anything leads to bitterness fool's gold leads to bitterness real gold well doesn't it just shine all the time people have gone crazy over gold over centuries and centuries and centuries and still today people do anything to get gold right you see rich people you know with big gold chains they can't get enough of gold why because it's beautiful isn't it because it's pure well, let me explain to you something when you eat a lot of artificial foods right which is crept into it all of our supermarkets and our food chain everything's out of lost so much artificial flavoring particularly preservatives like sodium benzoate which is not very good for you and other preservatives in the numbers that you see on the packaging and on the water and on the drinks that we buy because when your health deteriorates because of uh, continuous artificial consumption then you have a bitter situation because what would the doctor do what would the, would the doctor tell you to do was is to change your game is to start eating healthy but now your palate and 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 the way you're living you, you it's hard to eat something healthy because it's sour it's bitter it doesn't taste so good it tastes pungent it's not sweet however let me ask you something see bland bland food is very healthy and why it leads why that leads to sweetness is because your health is always improving it's better you're better off. I'm not saying you can it's a hundred percent silver bullet that your health's always going to be great if you eat well that's, that's not true either but you what all you're doing is reducing your chances of getting sick or all kinds of different illnesses that's all it's no no silver bullet this is no miracle cure that I'm talking about but bottom line right Dhamma, pure Dhamma, pure discipline always leads to sweetness because the results are always sweet. Merit is always sweet. For example, if you look at hard work, when you get the results of the hard work, when you get a nice paycheck or you're able to go to a nice dinner or you're able to go on a holiday, that's sweet for a while anyway. But what I'm getting at is hard discipline committing and uh, le yields sweetness in your life. And Dharma is always sweet. Dharma is all, because it's like medicine. Dharma is like an astringent, like a detoxifier, right? Yet what we want to hear all the time is sugar-coated, sugar-coated phrases or sugar-coated counseling, right? Or enabling or 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 language that enables bad behavior or unskillful things right and this is what the modern world has become has that made the Dharma obsolete has that made Buddhism and the monk life obsolete absolutely not I'll tell you now absolutely not wisdom is never obsolete pure is never obsolete and I'll tell you all these modern people and these uh, people that think that go around, actually go around saying that you know oh, it's uh, the the monk life is obsolete or that dharma is obsolete and you know for lay people and this and that I tell you it's not because when it counts you'll always <clears throat> particularly in Buddhism if you're a Buddhist you'll always refer to Buddhist teachings when things go bad you'll always run to the temple or a monk or some spiritual advisor when things aren't going good so at that point it's not obsolete at all it's really relevant but why wait why wait why bother you know practice every day practice all the time so this purity thing we're talking about pure chitta pure mind you know what that is pure mind right mind mind released from ignorance from craving full comprehension so education knowledge wisdom practice concentration discipline virtues virtues hard to get they're sour and bitter to get 
right? It's like hard work. It's sour and bitter most of the time. You have to sweat. Sometimes you bleed. Sometimes you get hurt. It's, you have to sacrifice. But you do it because there's a good result. There's a sweet result. Now, in terms of the mundane life, hard work, you know, you get to be able to buy that beautiful car you want to get, right? Or you get to, or on the skillful side of it, you get to house, you know, your your grandparents or help them or uh, pay your kids through school or whatever, things like this, help make people's life brighter. That's sweet. But it doesn't come from lack of virtue, it comes from virtue. And virtue is hard to, hard to develop. It's difficult. It's like concentration or samadhi. It's hard to develop. People talk about it all the time, but they're just talking. There's very few people sitting and practicing three or four hours a day. And you can, whether you're a lay person or not. It's just an excuse. You can if you want to, if you prioritize. But most people, what we don't admit, instead of saying things like, Buddhism is obsolete, this thing, why don't you admit that you are addicted to the artificial flavors? Why don't you start there? You're addicted to artificial flavors. You're addicted to shits and giggles, right? You like to sugarcoat everything because you like that flavor on all levels, mentally, spiritually. Now, I don't mean to, you know, be condescending or sarcastic or try to be uh, pompous, <laughs> pompous in this delivery and try to, you know, point the finger at you or anybody else. I'm not doing that. But isn't it interesting that when calamity strikes, you go to the pure all the time or the darn time? I mean, what else is better when you're sick than water with a squeeze of lemon? Hot water with a squeeze of lemon or vinegar. Vinegar, you know, a little bit of vinegar. It's really good medicine and it Stand, has stood the test throughout time. Simple stuff. Sodium bicarbonate. Very good medicine. Right? Very good medicine. Nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. What has changed? Uh, can you live without pure water? Try. Try. Right? Okay, but it's boring. It's boring. Flavor. We need to flavor it. Right? But that's what I'm saying. I'm asking you to reflect on this for yourself and understand what I'm trying to get at here. The Dharma is never obsolete or irrelevant in any situation, even a good situation. Pure things, bland things, healthy things always lead to sweetness, sweet results. It's good when your body's healthy and strong, isn't it? Isn't that sweet? Isn't it good when you, uh, isn't it better to be 80 or 90 and as strong as an ox? And you can bend down without hurt in your back or if you fall down you won't break a bone like most elderly people do or but what happens when uh, we get uh, old a lot of people suffering from multiple illnesses diabetes uh, congestive heart failure uh, multiple sclerosis or arthritis or all kinds of autoimmune problems right not saying that you can prevent this completely you can't you can't prevent aging but you can cut down bad health to an extent there's certain things you can do to cut down the chances but again like i said no silver bullets no silver bullets because when it's your time to go it's your time to go and, and the law of karma is in effect too for example just to contradict myself which i love to do uh, a good friend of mine was a professional golfer. Well, he wasn't really a good friend. I guess I say good friend in the sense that I had a good relationship with this person, but we weren't really like intimate on a friendship level. Anyway, this person had a very strong discipline. I had a very astute diet, right? And was very good at his golf. One problem that he didn't detox, and I'll get to it later. He has a heart attack at 44 years of age and had to get a, a quadruple heart bypass surgery. Some, I can't remember the exact terms, but anyway. 
got sick. But what this person was, he, he was, he was intoxicated with anger a lot. He was very aggressive mentally. I guess that's important for sport, but it was a little bit not balanced. You see, there's the the food element, right? There's the speech element, but there's the mental element. And a mind that is not filled with dharma and discipline, right, is unfortunately may lead. I'm not going to say 100% absolute because I don't like to condemn, right? But I will say that a mind filled with dharma and virtue and discipline will lead to a sweet taste all the time rather than the opposite. I think that makes sense and it's fair to say. But I'm not condemning people who don't. Good luck to them. One thing one of my first teachers always taught me was never paint the picture black for anybody. Never send the thought out and condemn someone. Never thought, send thoughts of condemnation on anybody, even if they've made mistakes. You never know. The person might improve. They might get better. Right? And also, it's not good mentally. Imagine having a mind that, that wants to you know, punish, condemn people all the time. You really want to be that person, right? So Dharma is the purest of it all. The Buddha's Dharma, the Lord Buddha's teaching, is the one that takes you to the sweetness, the, 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 the sweet flavor all the time. And that needs to be implanted. Like water falls from the, from the heaven and nourishes everything on a physical level. But what about your mental level? What about freedom? What about wisdom? Well, the Buddha's Dharma nourishes wisdom, nourishes the growth of wisdom. <clears throat> and so does discipline, <clears throat> sticking to morals, developing virtues, practicing, sticking to it all the time, never, never erring or coming off the path at whatever cost. You say, oh, that's obsolete. Is it? Is that obsolete? Is it out of date? Or what would you rather? Do you want to lie on your couch and just become um, <clears throat> obese and let all your bones become brittle and, and just eat all the artificial things in life? That is what is, is current right now. That's what the trend. Is that, is that what we're saying? Is that, that that's reality? Like the modern way, um, this artificial insemination of every part of our life of artificial things, inseminate artificial this and artificial that in all parts of our lives. I think that's obsolete and has always been obsolete and should be obsolete. And the pure things <clears throat> are not obsolete. They should be there all the time. And that's how I see it. So if you're a lay person and you think, oh, discipline is obsolete it, and it's not congruent with family lifestyle, think again. Think again. Are you saying a mind that's wise is less skillful than a mind that is artificial? See, think, people. If you want to be useful to your family and useful to society and useful to yourself, isn't it better that, you, that you're filled with virtue, that you're very skilled, that you have astute knowledge, that you have astute wisdom, right? Right? that you have capability. Isn't that better? So how is that obsolete? Now how does that come? It doesn't come from feeding yourself artificial things all the time or drinking artificial water, right? It doesn't happen that way. So what, so what is this talk about the training is obsolete, it's not great in the modern way? Ah, well, rubbish, rubbish. It's your understanding that's not correct, right? So like myself, I don't like to be too confident as a monk. Tomorrow, who knows, right? I might disrobe. I'm not saying I will. My wish is to die in the robes, but I don't know. But one thing that we should never do is blame the teaching for being too hard or saying that the teaching is obsolete because wisdom is never obsolete. Water is never obsolete. Pure things are never obsolete. They're always needed at all times. Think about it. Right? Why do you seek? Why does everybody always seek help? 
or counseling. They seek wisdom. They want to know better. They want to grow. There's never enough. Not enough wisdom in supply. That's the problem. There's a lot of the artificial stuff in supply. So, oh, yeah, wisdom has become obsolete. Yeah, in a sense, wisdom has become obsolete. In that sense, <clears throat> not because you can't, it's not, it's not relevant, but that's because you're too busy eating artificial stuff and feeding your mind artificial stuff. What, what do you watch on TV? What do you read? Who do you talk to? What do you talk to? What do you put into your mind? What rubbish do you put into your mind? <clears throat> do your conversations lead to freedom or lead to things that bring greater capability or skillfulness in your life? Do they or do they not? Now you have to ask yourself these questions. But I'll tell you what, the good thing about sour orange juice, all you need to do is add some a pinch of pure salt and a pinch of pure sugar. You can get the palm sugar, you can get brown sugar, or you can just get sugar cane, munch, crush it up and throw it in. That's even better, isn't it? You're getting the best of different flavors. Isn't that really healthy? Doesn't that sound healthy? Imagine that. You've got fresh sugar cane, just a little bit of salt, pure orange juice. You, you prepare the sugar cane, you put it in the orange juice, but just a little bit, not too much because it overpowers, overpowers the taste, but you still want that sour taste because sour is an astringent. It's cleansing, right? I'm talking physical level. But doesn't that sound healthy? Isn't that healthy, right? Sounds delicious too. Later, you feel better. In the long run, you, you, you drink that and you drink pure water. In the long run, you're better, you're, better, you're better off, isn't it? Just common sense. However, if you're drinking artificial water, artificially flavored water every day, in the long run, that's not, so, it's comp, not very good, is it? It's going to lead to not a good outcome, a bitter outcome, right? So add a pinch of salt, add a pinch of sugar right but don't sugarcoat anything in your life stick to the pure as much as possible it's never irrelevant it's never obsolete remember wisdom is timeless wisdom is relevant Ris wisdom is useful and skillful in any application if you've got it if you can get it if you can realize if you can develop it in yourself if not die trying don't give up on all the other virtues and you'll find that the bland, pure, bitter, sour life, right, leads to sweetness all around. But if you continue to choose the artificially flavoured, that will always lead to the bitter, the bitter end, right? Never, won't lead to anything good in the long run. So what you feed your mind, what you feed your body, and what comes out of your mouth, make it bland, make it bitter, make it sour, make it good medicine, right, for others to hear. But for yourself too, feed yourself the good medicine and you'll find you'll always be healthy, right? You'll always be healthy. So that's the way, folks.